Okay, I want you to tell me what you've been doing. Like, just I'm just curious, like how you approach this problem and the part, and then get lead up to the point where it stumped you. Sure thing. Well, um, what I've been doing, we want to get the molarity in this, like they call it the ice chart or something. Ice table. Ice table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was dividing the 0.9 moles by 4.5 liters to get the molarity, and then the same thing here. Um, just that we didn't have moles on this table. That's just kind of what that's what we had done a few times. <laughs> Probably with different. Good things. observation. Yeah, Indeed. so I decided to throw that in. Good. That's actually correct. You, you're oh, okay, you're doing the right thing there. Cool. There's a reason why though, but keep going. Sure. So then the coefficient of the first, well, of one of the reactants and one of the products is two. So you have to square that value, like raise the second power. Okay. Um, and that's good as well. And, you, and where are you raising it to the second power? Like where are you, where does this apply? Um, it applies before you plug it into the, um, what's that called? Equilibrium constant expression. Expression, yes. Kind of a mouthful there, but. Yeah. So when, it, when you're plugging the numbers into the expression, that's where I've been aware that you do that. Good, good. So I was doing that, got my answer, and it said it was wrong. And then I did it again, and I'd like forgotten a zero right up here. I'd done 0.02 instead of 0.2, well actually, so I added in a zero. Then I fixed it, and I got it wrong. So like my friend who had already done this, she looked up the work, and she's like, oh, that's weird. You have to multiply it by two and raise it to the second power. So let's see what you did. I kind of, yeah. I can already see where you got it wrong. Good. I want to start fresh. <laughs> because this is just, and I'm not saying that you're, you know, like, it's obvious, you know, because this is obviously, well, it's not obvious. I'm using obviously a lot. Sorry, that word. That's okay. It's, it's one of those things you just got to pay close attention to, mm -hmm. just with the ice table in particular. So we have, was it SO3 plus, o, no. Just that, yeah. 2SO3 makes... Is it 2SO2 and O2? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay, so. Amazing. Um, well, I'd helped someone with this before. I can imagine. Um, it's a daily. Well, it's, yeah, well, it's actually not as bad as you think. Okay. It's just those tiny little things that just, you're like, okay, I feel like I'm doing everything right, but. Yeah. So I understand completely why you would feel like so cheated. <laughs> you're like, what am I doing wrong, you know? So, that's why it's called an ice table. I never even knew that. Oh, really? I've been wondering this whole time why it's called an ice table. <laughs> this is why. It's kind of nice, huh? Yeah. So, an ice table is just the acronym for right. initial, initial change. change in equilibrium. Perfect. Now, just a little side note. Remember, ice tables. So, I guess Google opens ice. Um, an ice table is a simple tool to help you understand how to, I guess, look at a particular reaction and just kind of figure out what it's going to do to reach an equilibrium eventually. Okay. So if you remember what an equilibrium is, I drew a single arrow, which isn't correct. It needs to be you know, a double arrow going one way and the other. An equilibrium is simply what? Tell me in your own words. What would that so if we say a reaction's in equilibrium, what does that even mean? It's like not moving toward products or moving... Well, it's, it's actually like, so things are obviously changing, but the net, like, different, or like, change, I guess, yes. the direction from product to reactant is at equilibrium, so it's equal. Yes. Okay. I like how, I like how you use the words net, like the overall reaction is kind of like not changing. Mm -hmm. SO3 is still reacting to become this, and SO2 and O2 is still reacting to become that. Yeah. But if you look at, like, let's say a bar graph, and let's say we started out with this much of SO3 first, and we have zero of SO2, mm -hmm. and then over time, this starts going down and this starts going up until we reach this point where it no longer changes, and then we have, oh, this is how much SO3 we have, oh, this is how much SO2 and O2 we have. And it's not moving anymore. Maybe if you zoomed in at the molecular level, these would be like, you know, 
coming up and down. Maybe there's a little more O2 or a little more SO2. I don't know. Just, But anyways, glad you understand that idea because that's important. So then, at first, it is not at an equilibrium in this case. That's what initial kind of means. We're saying, okay, at this point, whatever concentrations we have are simply not at an equilibrium. So if something's not at equilibrium, does it want to get to equilibrium eventually? You remember in chapter 13, we're talking about this idea of entropy and all that good stuff, where it gives free energy? Yeah. So things naturally like to move towards equilibrium. That's what entropy is all about. Entropy is things naturally just want to get out of a state of higher energy and a state of higher order and kind of just spread that energy to other things. And so in this case, if we have only SO3, you can kind of look at this and go, well, and this is me, this is, that's just a side note, connecting chapter 13 with 14, sure. right? So SO3 in this state, having, being in a, let's say we put it in this little beaker, or not beaker, like a container, and this is all gas, so we'll stick it in this container, and it's got a bunch of SO3 hanging out here. Um, naturally, two of these will collide together and start making SO2 and O2, right? And in this case, as one as two of these collide, it makes two SO2s and one O2. So all we can, we can logically think, all that's happening is when these collide, two oxygens, one oxygen from one SO3 and one oxygen from another SO3, kind of like combine together to make the O2, leaving behind this. So you can just think about that in your head. Sure. I don't know if you're going into O chem eventually, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's good to think like that. But um, anyways, so then we have still some more SO3s hanging around. And let's say that's now at equilibrium. Now. So that's kind of essentially what's happening. So an ice table is now using numbers. That's it. We're just now using numbers to show and represent this becoming this. Mm -hmm. So ice tables shouldn't be all that. Confusing. Right. The ice but, table is usually not too bad. Oh, I understand. But now this is the part where the con concepts comes in with the math. Because we go, okay, well, we had an initial amount of this, right? Okay, how much did we have? Uh, we have, well, do you want it in molarity or moles? Oh, well, it comes in moles first, right? Yeah. So what, what, is, what is it? It's 0.9 moles of SO3. Okay, so we have 0.9 moles of this stuff. And with this container is how big? 4.5 liters. 4.5 liters, so I'll just put that over here. So we're essentially sticking 0.9 moles in this container that's 4.5 liters. Now you changed it conveniently to molarity because that's just what you do, right? I mean, yeah. you just remember learning from class. Well, the reason why is because whenever you have an equilibrium constant expression, these always have to be in molarity. So in order to actually use this expression, you need your units in molarity. So that's why you do that. And I, I just did this for you because I assumed you kind of know how to do this already. Mm -hmm. This set this up, right? Yeah. Products of reactants, pay attention to coefficients and stuff. Sure. So we have 0.9 moles. In order to eventually use the equilibrium constant expression, which is why we use the ice table, because this conveniently sets it up to where we can plug it into this. Okay. It's better to use molarity. I mean, it's just that simple. And you could leave it as moles, like 0.9, but when you get to the end, you'd have to put everything over four. Yeah. 4.5, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to divide your numbers, but we'd be having X's and um, all that kind of crazy stuff. The math would just be weird. So just do it first. Okay. You did that? What did you get? 0 0.2. 0 0.2 molarity. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, 0 0.02. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I lied. We're back to 0.2. Oh, sorry. Where's you sure it's you changing your mind I, or the calculator? I, I, I coded something and then I thought that I was right. Okay. But this is what the calculator says. Good. The calculator yeah. hopefully doesn't lie to us. Yeah. So now we have this much to begin with. We have 0 0.2 molarity. Okay. Now, how much of this stuff do we have? Um, it says at equilibrium, 0.1 moles is present. Of what? Of, um, of O2. Okay, so 
at equilibrium, we have a certain amount of O2, right? Yeah. Well, okay, so initially then, then how much do we have of these? Zero, right? So we, yeah. I mean, it hasn't even reacted yet. We haven't, this is just the beginning of the reaction. Right. So we don't have any of this stuff initially. Mm -hmm. Hence, initial before the change towards equilibrium. Okay. So then we've been just told another piece of data. We said something about O2. What was it again? Yes, yeah, that there is 0.1 moles. Okay, so at equilibrium, we have 0.1 moles, right? So at this point, we now go, oh, well, we have 0.1 moles of O2 in the 4.5 liters, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's great. That's good to know. And now then, why is, so then how can we use that in our ice table? Well, we know that if it's going from zero to that, then that would be the change. Right. So the so, change is plus, plus uh, 0. Oh, because you changed this to molarity, right? Right. What was it? Point point zero two 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 two. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm being accurate here. Just getting a, a molarity. Sure. And those are weird twos. <laughs>